What's going on, poetry lovers? It is Billy from Miso Shitomoji coming to you with today's poem. Uh, we've got the death poem of Ota Dokan. So let's start talking about the poem, then we'll talk about Ota Dokan, the poet, and then just a few random thoughts at the end. So the poem goes Kakaru toki, sa koso inochi no oshi karame, kanete, nakimi to omoe shirazuba. And let's break down the elements of that poem. So the first is kakaru toki. And uh, kakaru itself has a, a bunch of meanings. Um, in this instance, it means like at this time, but kakaru can also mean like a span of time, or it can mean like to fall into a trap or to, to fall prey to something. Uh, it can also mean like just now or soon. And then toki means time. So kakaru toki would be like at a, at a time like this. Um, the next part is sa koso inochi no. Oh, okay. Sorry, people are running by. Anyways, so um, sa koso means like all the more or even more. It, it's kind of like an emphasizer. And then inochi is life. So sa koso inochi no. Uh, no would be like a possessive particle, so that's meaning like something of life. Uh, the next line then is oshi karame. Now oshi is like the it's got like a, a meaning of like oh it's it's tragic or it's in vain or it's uh, transitory and empty and sad so when we combine that with the previous line uh inochi no that means like the sadness or the temporariness or the the vanity of life uh karame i couldn't quite find exactly what the like karame itself can can mean like to be wrapped up in something to be trapped into something um, but I'm not sure if that is exactly what uh, Ota was meaning in this poem. Um, a lot of times you'll notice that poems have like kanji, which are like the Chinese symbols, Chinese characters, which have meanings. And then they've got other symbols, which are just phonetic. And the problem when you only have phonetic symbols is there are a lot of homonyms. Like if we go back to the beginning of the poem and we say kakaru, kakaru, uh, it's only in a syllabary. It doesn't have kanji there. So it could have several different meanings. Um, in this case, though, karame, I'm, I'm guessing, means like to be tied up into. So we're talking about the, uh, the tragedy that's tied up into life. And then the next part is kanete, which means like known from before or in advance. And then na nakimi. Nakimi, it means like dead body, <laughs> literally like death or dead body. Uh, and, and then the last part is uh, omoe shirazuba. So that's a conditional. It means like if I didn't know. So if, when we put them all together, um, you know, I always put the translation up uh, along with uh, my explanation. But if you put it all together, it means something like, you know, if I hadn't known that I was already dead, I'd be pretty sad at a time like this. Um, and now to to talk about Ota Dokan's life, and we can tie it into the poem here. Um, Ota Dokan was a, a samurai. He was a retainer of the Uesugi family, uh, and specifically the branch was, uh, I think it was the Uesugi Ogi Gaiatsu family, if I'm remembering that correctly. And if it, when we're talking about these big, uh, like, big families in feudal Japan. Uh, the Uesugi family was quite large. It had several branches. So the Ogigayatsu uh, branch of the Uesugi family was who um, Ota Dokan served. Uh, his immediate lord was uh, Uesugi Sadamasa. And uh, Ota Dokan was pretty famous for constructing castles. He was the original architect, uh, the, the, the builder of Edo Castle, which is like now the Imperial Palace, but that became like Tokugawa Ieyasu's base of power uh, after he kind of consolidated control over the country at the end of the Sengoku period. So, you know, he, he was pretty well learned, he was pretty smart. Um, there's a, an apocryphal story about his life where he was out in a rainstorm and so he went to a local a small like dwelling and he asked for a straw hat and uh, I guess a, a girl in the dwelling handed him like a yamabuki flower. Uh, yamabuki is like a, a yellow rose, like a Japanese rose. And it was uh, a reference, she was making a reference to a poem in the, uh, I think it's called the Goshui Wakashu, which was like 400 year 
prior to uh, Olta's life. It, it was like a four century old uh, imperial compilation of poetry. And uh, I guess he like he didn't get the reference. Like he didn't know that she was kind of making a reference to the poem. I, I guess the contents of the poem had something about, you know, a uh, Yamabuki flower in a rainstorm. But he didn't get the reference. And so he felt really embarrassed. It, it would be like in, uh, you know, like in the year 2356, if uh, somebody had like a rubber band on their hand and they snapped the rubber band and said like, I'm the rubber band man. And, you know, their friend was like, what are you talking about? And the person was like, oh, you don't know T.I. from like 1998? Like, what's wrong with you? You, you, don't, you don't know the classics? But uh, yeah, I guess Olta felt really embarrassed at this and it pro propelled him to study poetry uh, more carefully. And then, you know, eventually in life, he gained a reputation for being quite knowledgeable. Now, there is um, also an apocryphal story about the circumstances surrounding the death poem itself. Uh, Ota Dolkan was actually assassinated when he visited the castle of Uesugi Sadamasa. Or not, not the castle, but one of his dwellings. Now, if you remember, Sadamasa was his lord, so you have to wonder, like, well, why did the lord want to kill his retainer, especially a successful retainer? And the reason is that... Uh, Dolkan was was quite influential and he was gaining a, a reputation for being you know a very competent uh, able-bodied person and so uh, I, I guess the idea is that Sadamasa felt threatened that there would possibly be a rebellion uh, and that Ota Dolkan would try to usurp him and take control of the uh, the family. So the story goes that uh, Ota Dolkan was exiting the bath so you're pretty vulnerable when you're leaving the bath. And uh, an assassin came, and there's two different, two different versions of this. Um, apparently in one version, uh, Ota Dolkan, after he gets like cut and he's going to be killed, uh, he says, like, we're ruined. You know, our family is ruined. And he was kind of foretelling the downfall of the Uesugi family, which, which happened, actually. Like, historically, after he died, uh, there was a lot of internal strife within the family, and eventually their power slowly waned. Now, another version is that the assassin knew of uh, Dolkan's reputation for being, you know, a man of letters. And so the assassin prepared a haiku uh, in advance. And uh, the haiku said something like, you know, at a time like this, life seems so precious. And that's what the assassin said. And then in retort, uh, uh, Dolkan said back to him today's poem, like, well, if I had, if I if I hadn't known that I was already dead, then yeah, at a time like this, I would be pretty sad about the loss of my life. Meaning, you know, I already knew that I'm dead or I already had the, the viewpoint that, uh, you know, life is vain. So I don't really care if I die now or die later, which is a pretty hard thing to say uh, when you're, you know, being sliced open naked coming out of a bath. I can't imagine what I would be saying in the similar circumstances, probably just making screaming sounds. But anyways, th th those are the apocryphal stories. And, you know, you get a lot of these kind of stories. Um, th these poems, these death poems are called jisei. That's, that's the Japanese term for it. And a lot of the times with the jisei, like, if you examine the circumstances around, surrounding the person's death, you, you, a lot of times, like, people are, you know, assassinated or they die suddenly. And you think, well, how exactly did they leave this death poem if, you know, they got really sick and they died or they got, uh, you know, mowed down by a guy on a horse? Uh, I don't know how much these things are, are death poems and how much they're just like kind of a poem that could be construed as a death poem and it was composed sometime near the end of their life. Like you get that with um, oh, Minamoto no Sanetomo. Uh, he's, he, uh, we covered his, you know, quote unquote death poem quite a while back and it wasn't really his death poem. It was just the last poem that he had publicly presented. And, you know, now it gets, gets known as his death poem. But, uh, yeah, just something I always thought was kind of strange. Uh, you know, how, how things get known and passed down in history and, like, classified as somebody's, you know, official death poem. Anyways, the, uh, the background or, or my, my thoughts on this poem, uh, I don't have too many. It's, you know, kind of more of like a historical, historically significant poem than I, than I think is necessarily, like, original or novel in thought the the kind of permeation of melancholy and the feeling that life is a dream you know 
we've got a ton of those kinds of uh, poems in our repertoire of 300 or, or so that we've translated. So that's not like a you know necessarily unique thought. Um, it is kind of if if you take into consideration the supposed back and forth that Dulcan had with the assassin, then yeah, it shows that he was very quick witted to be able to compose something uh, you know of such quality under such terrible circumstances. You know, the, in the past, I, I've done like uploads where one day I'll do one of these like life is in vain poems and then the next day sorry i'm just adjusting uh the next day i'll do a poem that is kind of different like there there's poems that say you know just because you think life's a dream doesn't mean you know you don't have to wake up in the morning and still do hard work and i tend to fall into the latter camp like you know it's uh, understanding the uh, the buddhist idea of emptiness and like impermanence that yeah you know everything is going to change uh, when we're born, our death is kind of already at some point in the future determined. So like being alive kind of uh, also denotes being dead at some point. So in that sense, then yeah, you can say like, you know, life is, is empty, life is transitory. But you can't really live like that in the moment to moment existence. <laughs> or I, I, maybe you can, I don't know, maybe Dulcan was uh, some enlightened prodigy, I, I don't know. But uh, just for like practical measures, you know, I've got kids, I've got a family. Uh, if my kids are like, I'm hungry, and I'll be like, well, you know what, life's a dream, so don't worry about being hungry. Uh, you can go to bed and don't don't have to eat dinner. Like, that, that's not really going to fly. I, uh, I don't think I would be a very good father if I did that sort of thing. So um, while I do appreciate the sentiment and the, um, <laughs> I guess, the uh, alacrity that uh, Dokkan was able to display with his use of words in uh, the situation that he was staring down his death, the uh, the actual idea or, or, or content of thought of the poem, I, I kind of just go like, eh, you know, it's in, it's, it sounds terrible to discount these, because who am I? I'm, I'm just, you know, some jabron who's here in front of a, a pond talking about poems, but, ah, you know, I've kind of seen, been there, done that. I, I've, I've seen that poem many times before, so I, I don't really have a lot of uh, deep thoughts about life. Uh, that come to mind from Dokkan. But uh, his poem was, you know, again, considering that he was uh, probably bleeding out, he, if he was able to uh, get these words down and uh, somebody remembered them or the assassin remembered them, then that's pretty incredible. Anyways, uh, that's the poem for today. Hope you guys are doing well. I'm having a good day, just uh, enjoying a little bit of cooler weather. Uh, I think it's 34 degrees centigrade instead of the uh, normal like 36 or 37 so uh, that's good and uh, the Mariners won yesterday so that's good as well uh, hopefully I'll be back tomorrow to bring you another poem if not take care everybody thank you for the subscribes and the likes uh, please keep it up and I'll talk to you later bye bye